Hi, it's me again, Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and this is the handover video of the Autotrail XL 690L. So, coming around the driver's side first, the first point you get to is your black handle underneath the skirt there, which is your waste water outlet. So, to drain off your waste tank, when it indicates on the control panel or you're ready to leave your site you drive over your disposal point for your dirty water so this is anything you've put down a plug hole and simply pull it and drain that out always make sure that's drained out in the winter so no water can freeze in there and i would leave it slightly open when you drive home so you can rock any loose water out as well to hook the vehicle up whether you're charging it at home prior to going away or over the christmas time to keep the batteries topped up when not in use or you're on a site you'll hook the van up the same way so hook up lead expose the connection by lifting the cover hook the van up first then hook the other end up and make the live lead never make the lead live when you're carrying it so that's why it's always important that you connect it the other way Cassette toilet, so all your external locks open with the habitation key, which is this black key here. Your cassette toilet, you would push both connect connections in on the door and drop the door down. So push both catches in to drop the door. Lift the handle and slide the cassette out. You can either carry it or you can wheel it to the disposal point because it could be heavy. And then to expose the filler end, you would take the cap off. So there'll be a gray cap that goes on here. You would disconnect that, pop that to one side, start to pour the cassette and press the button in to allow a bit of air in and give it a consistent flow when tipping. Once you've emptied it, there's normally a tap here. So you put a bit of water in, give it a rinse, tip out again, cap full, is 120 mil of green or blue liquid. You can measure it if you want to be precise and tip it in, or you can just put your chemical in here, put the cap back on and push it back into the van. Once it's back in, you can use it. If the cassette ever doesn't come out, it's because the blade on the bottom bowl of the toilet is still open. You need to ensure that's closed, but I'll show you that when we do the toilet inside. Now you've got an exhaust here for your your space heater so that will allow a little bit of smoke steam out there a bit of white smoke which is just the burning of the gas if you've got it on gas if it's on electric you'll not get anything from that but don't panic it's just an exhaust flue this is your fresh water drain so when draining it down for the winter or you're not using it for a while and you don't want stagnant water to be left on board the vehicle or you've taken a source of contaminated water on you just open this up and allow the fresh water to drain out of the vehicle however to fill it I'll show you this one first so we'll go back to this one this is your we get the key your filling points so you'll need to you've got a little key there to open it this is your filling point so you'll need to carry a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site flat end of the hose would go in here and the other end you'll have to connect to the site's tap and you want to fill the van up. You can look on board the control panel at any time and see how much water is on board or you can just wait until it overflows. Once it starts to overflow, your system is full. If you can't get a hose to the vehicle and you can bring water to the vehicle, this point here is a power point for a submersible pump and you can point and you can put one end in here and the hose into the water and it'll suck it on board. This, however, is an external cold water shower. So if it's a sunny day and you've had the dog on the beach or you've had the bikes, the boots, the muddy, you want to hose them off before storing them, there's a connection that comes with the vehicle and it is a like a hose, so it pushes in one end other than the other end, you've got a trigger gun. As long as the pump's on, you'll get a pressurised flow of water to this point. This is your storage. With it being the back lounge, you get storage that goes through the centre. You've also got here your boiler. So 
This is your boiler drain. It's very important that you drain your boiler down when putting it away for the winter or when we're experiencing frost because you don't want the hard frost to freeze the water because the boiler will hold 10 litres at any time. It's a 10 litre boiler. No matter if it's, if it's hot, it won't freeze, but if it's cold when parked up in the storage yard or on the drive, you want to drain it down. So you want to turn this to the back of the van and what that'll do is it'll allow any water to drain out underneath the vehicle. Leave all the taps within the van open, remove the shower head from the hose and allow the hose in the shower tray just so it doesn't bend and you've got no space for water to freeze, lie it down so it would run out. And then when you come to reuse it, obviously you would drain your fresh and your waste outside. When you come to reuse it, shut your boiler, assemble all your taps, shut them, shut your fresh, shut your waste, fill it up, pump on, cold you'll get a pressurized flow of cold go to the hot will start to cough and sputter until you get a pressurized flow once you get a pressurized flow on the hot your system is primed but it's very important that you drain the van down because it isn't covered by Autrail's warranty it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down as it's known as frost damage so if it's frost damage and it's caused by you they will not cover the replacement or the repair of the boiler so do be careful but you get into a habit of draining it down and you should be fine. High level brake light, reversing camera, two bike rack rails, Thule bike racks, not Fiamma. Thule on these, this is where the back panel has been strengthened to take a bike rack. Storage this side as well, we've seen in there, it's just storage. External gas point. So if you're wanting to cook outside when it's a nice summer's day and you've carried a Kadak with you or external barbecue, instead of carrying another cylinder, this will work off the cylinder that used is on the motorhome. So what you'll need to do is there's a connection here. This connection, the short end goes into the van. The ribbed end goes onto some gas hose, which you will have to buy. So it's rubber gas hose. You'll need a Jubilee clip to connect it to this end and that end. Pop it in and you'll be able to turn the, the gas tap, which isolates this point, and allow the gas through so you can do so, so you can do some outdoor cooking on your Kadak or external barbecue in the summer. So LPG, this is your liquid petroleum gas gas locker so again opens with the same key push both catches in and you'll be able to release the door i've got my test bottle on here so i'm going to show you what this black pipe is so there's your regulator from your black pipe is known as the pigtail it tightens on it's a thumb wheel tighten so just use your thumbs to tighten left to tighten right to loosen so opposite ways with it being gas tightens on you can open the cylinder so one or two turns at the top is enough you don't have to turn it all the way because if you have to isolate it quickly in an emergency it's far better turn it two times than turn it three or four and maxing this out so turn it on turn it off when you're prepared to go onto the road so if you're leaving your site or leaving home and it's been on make sure it's off so it's safer for you and other road users and make sure the cylinder is closed before motion make sure it's tied in when that bottle becomes empty the space at the back for another one so you can carry two sixes so you just disconnect the pigtail connect it to the reserve bottle exchange the empty one runs off propane not butane butane will freeze in the winter propane won't so get yourself green get yourself orange bottles not blue blue will freeze and it's not and this motorhome is not designed to be run on butane only propane so that's your gas locker Habitation door is central locking so on the Ford key you press the middle button and you can lock all the doors and this is locked. Top one to open the car, bottom one to open the hab door. One you've opened the top and the bottom always open the passenger door then close it. It was built as a chassis car but doesn't see the motorhome door so it will lock itself if you haven't opened the cab doors after a few moments. So I think it's about three or four minutes at lock itself. So get into a habit of just opening that door, then climbing in the back. Here you have the easy fill diesel system. So with it being a Ford, it doesn't have a cap. You can just push the diesel filler straight in and it'll fill with fuel. And then underneath 
it's ad blue so 24 litre ad blue capacity on the ford it'll do five and a half thousand mile on a full 24 litres once it's done around four and a half thousand and it's got a thousand mile left to go it will light up on the dash that it's coming low and top it up don't buy it on the in the drums buy it on the pumps it's about 120 litre 24 litres uh, capacity whereas you'll be charged 10 30 pounds for 10 litres on the drum which I think is a bit of a rip off whereas you can buy it on the pump a lot cheaper so go to your bigger petrol stations and they will have it as long as they've got a wagon diesel pump they will have add blue there as well if you've got to buy the drums you've got to buy the drums but it just see it's a little bit of a rip off buying it for that price some some places you can find that cheaper seats turn round both passenger and drivers I'll show you that inside and then the cab to get underneath the bonnet of the Ford key in the front left right up it goes and you've got your screen wash your oil filler your brake fluid your oil dipstick for checking your levels your coolant with it being a Ford the cab batteries are always underneath the driver's seat, so you mean engine battery. However, you do have a jumping point, so you've got an earth here. Give it a good scrub to get a good earth. And underneath here, you've got your positive, so this just, just come off. A little bit fiddly with it being so cold, but there is your positive point. There you are, so that's your positive. There's your coolant, like I've said. Three and a half ton gross vehicle weight, so this can be driven on a standard car license and it's got a ton towing weight. So if you put a tow bar on it, it can tow a ton. And you've got your front and back axle weights on there as well. So to operate the control panel, what you need to do is you need to press the on button and it'll bring you straight into the home page. So, when you first get on the vehicle, you'll want to put lights on. So if you click lighting, you've got your main interior lights, which are all then individually switched around the van. And you've got your outside awning light, which you can turn on. You can also change the percentage of dimmer, and you can press the dim, and you can dim your dimmable lights, which are fitted to the vehicle. Power. You can see that your leisure battery, because it's got a picture of a trailer leisure battery, is 95% charged and the current voltage is 13.7 volts. That is a false reading because as you can see here, it's shown that we're hooked up. So take the hook about to get a true reflection of what charges in your leisure battery. And the current coming in the battery is 9.6 amp. You can scroll along and you can see your vehicle battery. So it's saying vehicle, got a picture of a truck there, vehicle battery, good. And it's saying it's 12.5. If you wanted to charge a vehicle battery, which some people like to do over the winter when it's standing, alternate between vehicle and leisure, you just press here and it'll come and say charging. And then you can see that's gone up, so it's receiving some charge. Current solar panel ampage to the leisure battery is 0, 0.0 amps because what happens is when you hooked up, the solar panel can't compete with that charge that means electric's bringing in, so it does go to sleep. And it'll tell you there your estimated time to charge your battery, your percentage of battery and your capacity. So if we go back to the leisure there, there it's, so to get that full, it'll take one hour It'll take 50 minutes now even. The health's 100% and it's 66 amp hours. Water, click on water and you can view your fresh water reading. So you can see that your fresh water is 50% full on your fresh. If you're using it over the winter, and to stop the water from freezing when using it, it's fitted with tank heaters. So you can turn your tank heaters on here and you've got heated tanks on the fresh and the waste water. So you can turn them on and off here if it's going to potentially go to freezing temperatures overnight. Making sure your pump's on, you'll get a pressurised flow of water to the taps, toilet and shower. Don't put the pump on if you haven't got any water on board because you'll burn the element out on the pump and the motor. 
and this is your waste water levels there as well. So you can see there it's showing 0% waste because your waste is not full. Scroll along the environment, you can view the internal temperature, the internal humidity, and the external temperature there. And then you go into settings and you can turn off your key beep. So if it's beeping, just where it says key beep, you can turn that on and off. Sometimes it's a bit annoying. And you can view all your settings through here. And then if you just do go into help at the top of the panel, it will tell you which each button does, which is quite handy if you ever get stuck. It tells you what the lighting does, the power, the water and the pump and the environment. So to operate your heating and hot water, it's fitted with a whale heat air system. So it's whale that provide the heating and hot water. And all you need to do is wave your hands past the controls. As the motion sensitive, they will react to movement. And you do have your hot water and heating. So separate dials. Can't really go wrong because one's wavy lines which indicates seat, one's water drop which indicates water. So starting off with the water. So frost start, which is the snowflake, which keeps the water above freezing at five degrees. Then you can go, you've got 40 percent 40 degrees of water or 60, which is the boost setting at the bottom. So if you want the hotter water, make sure it's all the way around with the plus and the minus. If you want it just a little bit cooler, you're not bothered about how hot the water is, you can have it on 40. But well, we'll say 60 for this. And then depending on what source you want to use, so it's either gas or electric. So if you're well camping, you would have no other option but to use gas. So you'd, in, you'd press the gas flame there. Blue means I've selected it. Once it pulls the gas through and starts operating on gas, it will go to orange. So I've selected it, it's on standby there of gas. Give that a moment or two and that will go orange and start to operate on gas. If you weren't well camping and you were on a site, you wouldn't bother using the gas. You'd use your electric because you've paid your site fees after all. So you press electric and again, blue means on standby, orange means that they're both on. And you can have them on together should you be in desperate need for hot water. But with the electric, so we'll knock the gas off a moment, and we'll explain the electric mode. So you've got three little dots, so press and hold. One dot is 750 watt, which equivalents to six amp being drawn. Two dots is 1500 watts, which equivalent to 10 amp being used. And three dots is 3,000 watts, which is a 16 amp feed. You've got a reset button under here, so if you ever get a red exclamation mark, you can reset it here by pressing and holding the reset button. And then now for the heating, so you've got plus and a minus. Frost start keeps the interior temperature above 5 degrees. picture of the moon there which is known as nighttime mode which keeps the van at 15 degrees and then all the way around to 30 degrees maximum heat gas if you're while camping and you weren't hooked up because that would be the only source you'd be able to heat the vehicle off that will go to orange once it's selected and operating blue is standby so you've selected it give it a moment and it will light electric Obviously three modes, 750 watts on 6 amp, 1500 watts, 10 amp, and 3000 watts, which is a 16 amp feed. So you've got 6, 10, or 16. So depending on what your site offers you, some smaller CL sites you might have to use um, one or two, so 10 or, or 10 or 6, and on 
bigger sides you can use 16 on three but by all means you can run the gas and electric together on both sources if you're away in the winter and it's cold to get the vehicle up the temperature inside and the water if you're in desperate need of a shower you can, you can put them both on together to reduce the time it takes to heat the water or the vehicle so stepping into the washroom to operate your toilet ensure that the pump's turned on and you'll be able to press the blue button here which is your flush button so your toilet does turn press the blue button Put a small amount of water in the toilet before you use it. This helps lubricate the seal between the, the bowl of the toilet and the top of the cassette so it doesn't stick. And then before you use it, you want to open the blade, which is this grey handle here. So that slides to the right. You can use the toilet. Once you've finished using the toilet, you'd obviously give it a good flush. If you've bought the blue and pink chemical, the pink isn't needed because it's a freshwater fed cistern, unlike some other motorhomes and caravans where you have a separate header tank. However, you can still use it, but all you need to do is put in a spray bottle and spray the bowl, because you can't put it into the water system because it's fed to the shower and all taps. So you'd spray, flush, and then when the toilet indicates that it's full, the cassette, you'll get three green lights underneath this diagram here on the back wall of the toilet to see that it is full and that means you can as long as it's shut which get into a habit of shutting it you'll be able to slide it straight out the side of the van and use empty replenish and put it back in to use the toilet toilet roll holder push the catch in there and you do have some toiletry space and some more toiletry space here shower curtain which comes across but on the door you do have a towel rail as well and a hanging rail for some towels or your dressing gowns kitchen tap is also your shower head so press here and you'll be able to get a pressurized flow of water and stop there And that is your hot water there coming through. It's getting nice and warm. And then for the shower, it just pulls out. And it's handheld. And you'll be able to have a shower. And then put, feed the pipe back down into here. But when winter rising, in the winter to stop any water from freezing here, pull this out, unscrew the shower head from the hose and lie the hose down in the shower tray. And it just means that you can leave the tap open when you've drained all your water system down and no water is going to freeze in here and cause any damage to this pipe. It's also good that you leave all mixer taps open so do it for the kitchen tap as well. One thing I will say about all the washroom, it's all plastic lined so do just be careful with what you wash and clean the shower, tray, toilet, sink at width and surrounding walls because you will damage the finish if you use anything harsh like bleach or any scourers. I personally would use some Dettol spray or some flash spray uh, or wipes. Don't use any bleach products uh, and don't use any harsh abrasive scourers. Use a microfiber cloth or just as simple as a little bit of fairy up liquid on a cloth and clean it all out. At the back of this model, with it being the 690L, it stands for lounge, so you do have a lovely U-shaped rear lounge, which creates into a large double bed. So to create that, little catch here, that slides down, that slides out and it'll hit these stoppers. Lift that up and continue to pull the board over the stoppers. That means it can't go back on itself, it's all nice in place. And then your base, your backrests, go into there. This second one will be a bit tight, but what you've got to do is it's designed to be tight so that it doesn't move. So there you are. 
You can turn them all upside down, which we advise, because then you don't get the bull nose and the ribs of the cushions. You get the flat end, and you sleep across the width of the vehicle. You can remove all the backs as well, so you get that little bit extra space. Um, so just pop them underneath or out the way, and you'll get a larger bed. But that's how it would be from day time to night time on the 690L. To make your half dinette into the occasional single bed, what you need to do is you need to lift your table off and fold your leg and pop that to one side for a moment. Take your base cushion off. And what happens here is, there's a little catch, so you want to unclip that and, and unclip this one here, and this will slide forward. There's also a leg, so you push that in, and the leg supports the front. This folds over. This is also where your leisure battery is. So that folds over. This goes back on. The infill cushions that can be found around the vehicle. So you've got two here first. One. That one. One will go in here, like that. There's another, which is shaped, L-shaped. That'll go on there, but what you need to do now is, the table now comes into its use. So it clips onto this reel here. So lifts on, clips on, and rests upon the door bin. This will now go onto here, like that. And then this big cushion will go at the back here and there you have made your single bed so if you have a look at it from my side there is your single occasional bed so this unclip this fold it forward leg down table on cushions on and there is another bed at the front of the vehicle out of the half dinette on the xl range to operate your fridge it's a 12 volt compressor fridge so it works off the leisure battery however when you hooked up you're charging the leisure battery so you can press and hold to turn it off and on so that's it off that's it on select the temperature when it's on and you want to bring the temperature down all you've got to do is press and hold and wait until it flashes and you can turn it back down however when it's on full you can put it on nighttime mode which is the little moon here and it lowers the decibels of the fridge so it stops it from performing too loud which is which you would press there but I've just switched it on so it's not performing yet once you finish with it clean it out and leave the door open and to do that you would just slide this little blue clip into the middle press the door upon it and it will allow air to circulate in and out of the fridge if you need any parts for this fridge the part sticker is here the Fetford numbers Quote them to any dealer including us and we'll be able to get the right parts for you and then you do have your freezer box above as well so now in the kitchen you've got three gas burners on the hob so as long as the gas bottles open and your gas taps are open as well you'll be able to get gas through so there's three once you've had them on, allow them to cool before you put the glass lid down, otherwise you may shatter it with the heat. And underneath is where you'll be able to find, I'll just remove that. Your grill. So there's your grill working. And underneath your grill, there's your oven. With your grill, you do have to keep the knob held in a little bit longer. Um, just until the thermocouple gets warm before releasing, otherwise it will go out. Any parts that you need for the oven, the sticker for the oven is here. Underneath 
is where you'll find your fire extinguisher and your gas isolation valves but these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation service so there's four grey taps along here any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced unless you know which gas appliance is causing an issue and you can isolate it there above in the centre push the catch in and you've got a large overhead storage compartment cutlery drawer which slides back and you've got drawers underneath push the catches in before you travel and it'll just make it safe so nothing opens and there you have two shelves in a storage cabinet there so underneath the dinette seat is the location of your leisure battery so you do have a 70 amp hour lithium deep cycle battery there with a 30 amp master fuse so that's your main leisure battery just underneath your double dinette seat underneath the fascia of your dinette seat you can open this and this drops down and behind here is your sergeant ec 700 power supply unit so you've got a black button here which says system shutdown button and what that does is it will stop any power drain from the leisure battery and it acts as a battery cutoff switch so if you're storing it or you anything like that you might want to turn that off but if you do turn that off it will stop the radio and reversing camera working on the XSENT head unit and your solar panel putting any charge into your batteries so do be aware that if you go to reverse the van you're wondering why the camera or the radio is not working if you've turned that off that is why this side you've got all your 12 volt fuses so they will show a red light underneath the fuse if it has blown i would personally carry some spare fuses with you just in case the fuse does blow you can replenish the fuse when you're away and you don't have to interrupt your holiday you can get packs of normal blade fuses on likes of amazon or ebay quite cheaply now this side you've got your charger and your heating and hot water so these are fuse spurs so you can turn them on and off by turning them off like so but i would just leave them on they will react to when the vehicle is hooked up unless you are leaving it hooked up in the winter and you don't want the heating and hot water uh, 230 side to work in case somebody puts it on you can turn that off and under here you've got your main trip so your rcd and your mcbs which will work various appliances so it shows there at the three MCBs and it does show all of your 12 volt fuses here so like I say carry some spares just in case you need them sliding the passenger cab seat forward you've got your EM56 interface fuses so these are fuses which cross over between the leisure side of the vehicle and the engine side of the vehicle such as your electric step fuse your on and light your en route USBs, your tone electrics if you want to have them fitted, there is already wired, um, tone permanent live, your fridge element fuse and your vehicle battery fuse which are all under here. So again carry some spares with you just in case you do need them and you can replenish the fuse here. It will also work your marker lights so if your marker lights ever go off it will be a fuse which is under here. So this is just showing that your hot water system's working. It's pressurizing and you can see the steam there so the water is up to temperature. So your real water heater is working correctly.